Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Annie. Today is going to be a video about top 10 herbs that I grow here and why I grow them. But before I get into that, I, I want to share one project that I'm working on with Lynn from Bucketless Homestead and that is March Molasses Madness. And it is recipes around the star being molasses and we're creating tour throughout the month of March uh, videos. Lynn will be on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern and I will be on Thursday 3 p.m. Eastern. We each have videos. Some of them complement each other. Some is like similar recipes and some are actually going into battle. Who has the best recipe out of the two? So if you don't want to miss out, you can subscribe to both our channels and hit that little bell so that you don't miss out any video. Second message, uh, I need your help. I made a little short video about it, but in case you missed it, I just want to share it again. So Let Pot sent me another um, another device to work with, and go see that video. I'm gonna put everything in the description below, and see if you can help me out uh, with my little problem. Now let's do the top ten herbs. Let's start with one of my favorites. So basil. Basil is. There's so many different varieties of basil. So there's, there's Genevieve, there's Italian large leaf, there's mammoth, which is like a big leaf. You can actually use that as just uh, green in your salad. Uh, I sometimes just use it, put it into my tomato sauce that I can. But one of the main reasons why I grow basil is for the flavored one. Obviously the colorful ones, the ripple one, and all of those are like super fun, super delicious. You can use them as decoration on your pizza, uh, pesto. But in me, it's the licorice basil, lemon basil, and cinnamon basil. I dehydrate them and I use them in my tea blends. I companion plant next to tomatoes. From what I'm reading, it was a good companion. And every time I have a row of tomatoes, it's either in the bottom of it, I grow lettuce or basil. Because the canopy of the tomato plant is creating a shadow, less heated area. So as the tomato plant grows, uh, the basil reaches its maturity, but then the tomato goes surpassed it. And then the canopy that is created, I don't have basil going right away from seeds, so I can let the plant bush out and have a lot from just, I think I do three, four seedlings per bunch, and I just plant uh, like one row of that next to my tomatoes. And I never lack basil. I actually sometimes have too much, so I dehydrate it. And when it's green basil, I just dehydrate it and put it for later on during the year. But I love doing fresh leaves of basil on my pizza. Collecting the seeds of basil is super easy. It is an annual. As soon as the basil goes to seed, there's going to be like beautiful flowers. I actually leave some of my basil plant go to flowers because it attracts pollinators. And it does attract a little bit of aphids, so it does become like a sacrificial plant, but I have more aphids on my chamomile that I have on my basil. Again, I read this online. I don't know if it's true. I might test out this theory. It repels mosquitoes. So I did say this in my top 10 flowers that chamomile repels mosquitoes. So I might, <laughs> I might plant close by as ornamental I do have one that's considered an ornamental basil. You can eat it, but the flowers are beautiful. I might sew that closer to the house. Number two, chives. So there's two types of chives I grow here. One is garlic, one is regular. So both, like the regular one tastes more like onion and the other one tastes a little bit more like garlic. To make the difference between the two, the garlic one is flat and the regular one is round and it, there's nothing in the middle, it's hollow. Uh, I grow these for fresh eating, 
but the regular one has like this pinkish flower that I harvest as soon as it blooms and I infuse it in vinegar and I make uh, a vinegar that tastes a little bit like onions and it's pink because the flowers are pink. And um, when you do your vinaigrettes, you have like that infused onion thing going on and it's like this pink hue in your vinaigrette. So it makes like even more delicious, yummy vinaigrettes. Uh, you can plant them next to tomatoes because it does repel aphids, but since it's a perennial and it comes back every, every year, and I don't necessarily plant my tomatoes every year in the same location, I tend to allocate like one specific area for chives. It is said to repel cabbage, cabbage worm, but same thing, if I would plant it near cabbages or... I could plant it like the row next to the row of my cabbage, but since like same thing as tomato, like it ha I, I tend to give permanent locations for my perennial flowers and perennial herbs. Number three, it's a uh, dill. Dill is so beautiful. It has like these beautiful bouquets. So I actually have dill for the monarch butterfly uh, before they become a butter butterfly, they just stay on these plants and they eat it. So I want to encourage the monarch butterfly to establish here. So dill is a companion plant for me for my cabbages and for food for the mo monarch butterflies and pickling. So it adds also beauty to the garden. It does go to seed very fast but collecting the seeds is super easy. So you could have two possibility, two possibility happen to you. It can sell seed the year after. It did happen to me a couple of times, but collecting the seeds of dill is super easy. You just let the flower reach its maturity and then the seeds are gonna form and then you're gonna see the dill seeds just pick up one big bouquet or two and you're good for at least one or two seasons after. Number four, mint. I love mint just for the fact that when it goes to seed, I have spearmint next to the house. When it goes and when it blooms, it goes to seed. I have so many buzzing friends there. Uh, I just love it to see it. So I create like this biodiversity with different types of mints that I have. But my favorite is chocolate mint. I have on one day on a whim decided I was going to do frozen mango blend that with a little bit of water and add fresh chocolate mint and i, I think this is called gelato because it's just water or sorbet either or it's one or the other and i gave that to the kids and they loved it and i love also to dehydrate chocolate mint for my tea blend so i mix uh cinnamon basil chocolate mint and chamomile, and now I'm adding, I don't grow this here, hibiscus flowers within that, so I have like all these beautiful flavor going on, and then with the hibiscus flower, it kind of gives it like a tint of like pink red to the tea, depending how much I, I put into that. So mint definitely is for my tea blends and for the buzzing friends. I did add apple mint, banana mint, pineapple mint, a couple of mints this year I added, uh, I lost track. They were in very bad shape when I received them. I up-potted them late in, this, late in the summer, into the fall, into 12-inch pots. I do hope that they do well. I'm gonna bring them out soon out of the tunnel. I hope that they're gonna survive because the apple mint and the, I think it's pineapple mint, I started experimenting with them into frozen desserts they were awesome. Uh, it is a perennial and it comes back with a vengeance. So if you start with like one four inch pot that you bought at the nursery, I find starting seeds of mints can be challenging. So I prefer buying uh, like a four inch pot and then I propagate it because it's super easy and I kind of like do three, four plants and then the year after, it's somewhat contained, but I would say within two, three years, what started as a couple of plants would like take over. 
So I started with one plant or two plants my dad bought me. And within two to three years, I have like this 10 feet long by four feet wide of, of mint. And I have to rip some out every year. So if you don't want that problem, make sure you contain your mint in either like a raised bed or a pot so that it doesn't propagate everywhere because it does come back every year. I did forget one thing about uh, dill. I dehydrate dill because I have discovered a dip that I do and the kids really, really enjoy it and it tastes a lot of dill. So that's another thing I do, so I dehydrate it. Uh, number five, oregano. It is a perennial, it comes back every, every, uh, every year and uh, same thing as mint, not as much as mint, but it does like get bigger. So I have, at the end of the year, I remove at least 50% of the plant and I dehydrate it for any meal that I need oregano. So pasta, uh, what else do I use? Oregano, some of my dips that I do, uh, sorry, not dips, uh, my pizza that I do, my pizza sauce I do require oregano. So there's different like Italian dish that I use, also some Greek uh, like the Greek potatoes that I do uh, in the oven. So it's really a culinary herb. But the flowers also of the oregano plant attracts a lot of pollinators. So you, you're going to kind of see uh, a trend again going on that I let a lot of my things go to seed flower because they attract so many lovely pollinators and it's good to create biodiversity in your garden. There is also a little story behind oregano. Uh, the re like, I don't use that much. So basically it's mainly for the pollinators, but there was one year that we raised turkeys here and one of the turkeys was, the head was just big enough to go through the fence of my garden. So you had like, maybe like this and the turkey would go through the fence and eat my oregano and left it. I think there was like one third of the bush left because like he loved oregano. <laughs> so we nicknamed that turkey oregano. So I kind of feel bad to remove that plant even though it like collects a lot of space in my garden because it does remind me of one of the turkeys we had. I was so sad that I couldn't keep him. He was a great, turkey but like I can't keep uh, turkeys here so it was mainly for uh, why we raise turkey was for the meat so the kids were very sad because it was fun watching him number six rosemary rosemary is a new herb for me it is a perennial but I kind of have a hard time getting it to establish from seed and to come back so last year I've purchased a plant uh, rosemary and I'm hoping to do a lot of clippings from it to propagate it and to have like a good thing going on because a lot of my hair products that I do uh, is based with rosemary either fresh or dehydrated and I also start using it as culinary herbs so I really hope that the plant I bought last year will survive because for me it is very hard to start it from seeds and it kind of has a hard time to overwinter so I have to do a little bit research about that but I really want to establish a good patch of rosemary because it is said that it repels Japanese beetles I do have a lot of Japanese beetle and every year I go to war with them. I go with a little bucket of soapy water and I just tap on, on my plants where I see them and I go multiple times a day. As soon as I see my first one, uh, I just remove them and I've been kind of like controlling the population here and I do have sacrificial plants uh, for Japanese beetle, which is my raspberries. So I am, I, I have a hedge of raspberry. The first row that I have, it's sacrificial. They love those plants. So they, I find them mainly, I would say 90% on those plants. So it's like pretty easy. But last year I did find them in my garden. 
So if I can add rosemary plants in uh, some of my raised beds in front, uh, like just right in front of the raised beds. So if ever like they bush out the first feet of my, um, of my garden beds, I don't use them, uh, my raised beds, because like where the sun hits or it's not like ideal. So usually I either put uh, basil there, nasturtium or flowers, but since I have a lot of Japanese beetles that come, I put that there so it could repel it. So this is something I'm gonna try this year because they are a problem. Number seven, this is another favorite of mine, recent three, this is be the third year. Sadly, I can't grow it from seeds, I haven't found it. It is pineapple sage. I love pineapple sage and there's also a melon version I discovered last year and I'm discovering a lot uh, of different sage and I did, they are perennials, they come back. I did buy a very, very sick looking plant last year that was tricolor and I love the, the patterns on it. So I do hope that one overwinters. It attracts, when they go to flower, it attracts hummingbirds and I would love to have hummingbirds because it reminds me of a trip of me and my husband um, and I love watching them around the house. So this is like one of the reasons I let pineapple sage go to seed because it attracts a lot of, of uh, buzzing friends that I want like butterflies also. Uh, it is an annual for us. Certain areas of the world, it is considered a perennial but not here. I dehydrate them for tea blends because uh, I want to add it because it helps to relax, to wind down, to stop the noise. So I want to include it into my tea blends. It is also a cut flower. It says the flower is red, it is beautiful. I have not tried herbs as cut flower, so if I if I have enough, because they're easy to propagate, so what I do is I go buy one or two plants that are like really bushed out, and then once they start to get bigger, 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 I cut it and I make baby plants, and then I have like a lot of that. Or I go to nurseries when everything goes for a dollar, and last year I was lucky enough to find more plants, and um, I was able to have a lot of pineapple sage. It does have a pineapple smell, so it is very fragrant. Number eight, catnip. This is a new one for me. I discovered this one in the two years ago, but I started growing it here last year. So two years ago, I met a lovely lady at the Eastern Ontario Homesteading Conference, and she was talking about her tea blends to help me, help me and the kids relax, tune down. And she mentioned catnip, and I was like, really? Like, I wouldn't think the catnip would be other than for cats. But then um, she talked to me about, like, it promotes rest, like, to tune down before bed. So I'm like, hmm, I have to do that. So last year I started a couple of seeds. It is said to be perennial, but I don't know. So I am starting again seeds this year to make sure that I'm able to have enough to dehydrate for my tea blends. So you can actually use it as a companion for cukes, tomatoes, and cabbages, uh, squash bugs. It says to repels aphids and squash bugs. This is a new one for me. I have a lot of squash bugs. I'm in zone five, so zone five and up. They have a lot of squash bugs, so I'm gonna try to maybe grow catnip as a sacrificial plant near. Number nine, chamomile. I did talk about this in my top 10 flowers, but I find that it is also an herb. So whatever it, whatever it is for you, for me, is both. So chamomile is an annual, but it does sell seed. It's easy to collect the seeds, so you can just, you let the flower do what it's supposed to do, and at the end of the season, some of the fleds are like, some of the heads, the white part petals are done, and they, they dry out and then you're left with like this yellow cone-ish and those are the seeds and you can just sprinkle them at the end of the season and most of them will come back. So the I've been doing this every year and then in the spring I have like a surprise of like 
hundreds of seedlings and I just dig them up and I put them in cell trays. So last year I took a bunch and I had a 50 cell tray because it's 50 cell tray, it is the, the little hole is bigger. And I had 50 and I had some everywhere and I relocate them near my onions. They're very good near onions. They're very good companion plant. Uh, from what I've read, it's supposed to give a better flavor to the onions. It attracts the aphids. So it is also a sacrificial herb for me, but it's really for teas. Like I love chamomile tea mixed with other. So it's a trap crop. It's beautiful flower. It attracts the pollinators. It's like tea. That's, so it's a powerhouse for me, chamomile. The last one, thyme. I have two types of thyme here, actually three now. One is the carpet version, which is like a cover crop, like a carpet going on. Uh, I was gifted some seeds last year and I am using that carpet as a ground cover for I think my half caps so that I don't have that much to um, weeds to remove so I think I'm going to do a lot of carpet style row like ground cover time is going to be one of them because it does attract a lot of like the flower attracts a lot of pollinators. So that's one of the reasons why I grow this particular time of time. And I was able to find more seeds. So I am definitely growing a lot of that for my perennial, uh, sorry, my bush berries. All of my bush berries, I'm hoping to have like some type of carpet thing going on, like sweet Elysium, but that's an annual but the time would come back year after year after year. So it's gonna attract all the insects that you need and you won't have to remove any weeds. I also have the regular thyme. Uh, it's a culinary herb, it's very fragrant. The flowers at the end of the season attract a lot of pollinators, but I do have a new one that is a lemon. And I love to use that one into fish meals. It is also a good companion for the brassica family, the cabbage, because since it's very fragrant, it will repel some of the problems, like the cabbage worms, because like it's kind of going to throw off their scent of the cabbage, but it doesn't repel everything. If there's something I've learned, when you companion plant a flower and herb near the plant like a tomato or cabbage it's not going to repel everything you're still going to have some of the pests it just controls makes it more controllable and the end result means that you have a more organic uh, fruit or vegetable since it's a perennial it comes back every year this is similar to mint you start with one plant and it bushes out. So you need to control that plant. So once in a while, I reduce the plant a lot and I there's years that I dehydrate a lot. I do find dehydrating time and using time when de dehydrated is a bit labor intensive. I did find a trick last year, a little tool that you just pass it to like a sieve. You just pass it through it and it's gonna make your life easier. I will try this this year when I dehydrate it. Um, for culinary purposes, like time goes on my pizzas, in uh, my soups. Time here is very, very popular, but I end up buying a pound of time at least once a year because of that time consuming. But if that little trick, I already have the sieve, if that trick makes it super easy for me, I'm just gonna use like a rope and dehydrate it. And at the end of the season, just use that to help me out. There's two, two three tricks I found to make my life easier. I, mean, I will definitely try it this year. I do have somewhat good results starting time from seeds, but I find it easier just to buy a mother plant and you can propagate it. So I did buy a lemon thyme and I had so much fun propagating it. And now I actually have one inside the house because I'm not sure where I planted my lime time last year so I kept one of the clippings and I will make a new uh, new place for it um, so that I can come back with a vengeance every year because I no longer have 
dehydrated lemon thyme. I only had a little. So there you have it. That is my top 10 herbs. I do grow a little bit more. Like I said, like the pineapple sage, I have other types of sage. This year I'm adding clary sage. There's so much that I have here, but those are the ones that come back year after year that I really enjoy. And I am also adding for medicinal purposes, but I'm since I'm such a novice at med, like medicinal, like Molin, I'm adding it this year, but like I have no knowledge of it. So definitely I will make like videos, updated versions of this one. So I thank you for passing by the homestead and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.